All right, let's get started. How's everyone doing? Como esta todos? Ni hao. Hi, my name is Christopher Marte. I'm the council member that represents Lower Manhattan. And I've been working with these home attendants that have been leading the fight to stop the 24-hour workday. When I say no more, you say 24. No more. 24. No more. 24. No more. 24. When I say no more, you say 24. No more. 24. No more. 24. No more. 24. That's what we're here for. These home attendants have been fighting for decades to make sure that their voices were heard and so that they could end the practice of the 24-hour workday. They built the campaign, they sued their employers, they picketed outside of their unions, they called on the governor to stop it. And finally, we are here in front of City Hall, ready to pass legislation to do just that. So thank you so much. I want to say that one more time. Thank you so much. I know typically we're all angry. We're all pissed because we feel like when we shout, no one's listening. But today is a day to celebrate because it was you that shouted for days on end, for years on end. It's you that stood outside of your union in the freezing cold, picketing. It's you today that will have a voice when we pass this bill as a unified force. So give it up again to you, the home attendants for the fight. I also want to thank the coalition that is the Ain't I a Woman campaign that was able to unify, you know, workers from Flushing, from the Lower East Side, up to Buffalo and around this state to say this case matters. This injustice can't go on. And you have been able to organize on social media platforms, create press conferences, to make sure that this fight doesn't stop. And so I want to thank AI Women Campaign and everyone part of that coalition as well. And so many people have asked me, why is this so important to me? Because my mom was a home attendant. Like many home attendants, she worked at the garment industry. And once that industry started going abroad to other countries, she changed and became a home attendant. My mom would work in Parkchester, Bronx. She'll commute two hours and take care of a senior that was bedridden. And many times her agency said, you have to work 24 hours because that's the only job that's offered for you. And as a child, I would see my mom leave on Monday and sometimes don't see her until Thursday. Imagine the mental and physical damage that put on my mom, on our family, on our community. Imagine what happened to that patient, knowing that she had someone taking care of her that was on the clock for 24, for 48 hours. That's not right. It is shameful that we're here in 2022, still fighting this fight. And 20 years later of my mom being a home attendant, she still gets those questions. Do you want to work for 24 hours? That's shameful. But we're happy that today in 2022, we're going to put a stop to this. Yeah. And we're going to make sure that these women have the proper working conditions, the proper quality of life, so that their families, their community, can actually enjoy them and live with them and love them. And so that they can stop sacrificing their bodies, their whole life, for caring about our patients and making sure that those patients get the proper care that they need by splitting those shifts to two 12-hour shifts. This is about not only improving their condition, but these patients' condition and the industry as a whole. So I'm so excited to intro this bill, and I'm so excited for the program that we have coming up. 
And so thank you all for being here. And up first, we have a home attendant who has been fighting for a really long time, uh, Miss Wang. happen. If it's adopted, no. 
when it is adopted, yeah. it will prohibit employers from assigning a home health care health care worker to multiple 12 hour shifts. It will limit the number of hours they can they can work in a week to 50. As you just heard from our councilman, the ramifications are wide, not just to the actual workers, not just to the patients they are taking care of and they need to be at their best to be able to do, but to their immediate family. This must change. The National Organization for Women urges the new women majority led city council to rally together to pass this bill which would finally put an end to abusive workplace practices and end the 24 hour work day for our most essential, mostly women, mostly women of color workers. This is what we all worked for last year, to change the dynamic in the city council. And we know that they are gonna do the right thing and make this a priority. This is the signal to this city, this bill, that electing them was the right way forward for our city. We are looking to the women in the city council to quickly move to support this bill and make the provisions in this a reality for all of our workers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia, from now.
No more 24. Thank you. Thank you. You know, this past year, we held a lot of rallies in the steps of the City Hall talking about honoring essential workers. Home attendants are the essential health care workers throughout this pandemic. They would take the train when no one could. They would put on gloves and masks and take care of the most vulnerable. They did God work in the darkest time that we've lived through. And so thank you so much for that. Up next, we have my colleague from Upper Manhattan who has been a true fighter for workers' rights. He was a tenant activist helping tenants from being evicted, and he has a lot of credentials of fighting for workers. And so it's so great that I have the support from fellow council members to build this coalition to eventually pass this bill and change the law. So thank you, council member Sean Abreu. Let's hear it up for Chris Martin, everybody. This is, I mean, this is inspirational. Look at, look, look around everybody. Look at the people that came out for a press conference on the first day of the week, given yesterday was Memorial Day. There's so much power in people. There's much, so much power in organizing. With Marte at the helm, with organizing, you bet things are gonna get done. Look, a 24 hour work shift. It might be in a fancy home, but it's the same old sweatshop labor that we've been trying to stamp out for generations. Our home care workers have described these shifts as killing them slowly and destroying their health. The folks who disproportionately bear the brunt of these 24 hour shifts, yes, are low income immigrant women of color. No one's care should come at the cost of a caregiver. As we heard from Ms. Wang, she took care of a patient with a lot of physical conditions. And because of the 24 hour workday, she is now a patient herself. That is powerful. But what needs to motivate us, what needs to be more powerful is our action and that's what we're here to do. I'm here to commit to you that we're going to fight to end the 24 hour workday, to end the same old sweatshop labor that we've been trying to stamp out for generations. Let's call it for what it is. Thank you so much. Now let's get this done. Thank you, Sean Abreu. Up next, we have a daughter of a, of a patient uh, who can talk about her experience throughout this struggle. I want to invite Shirley. When my mother's Alzheimer's condition deteriorated to the point where she required 24-hour coverage, which was approved, I learned that the person who would be caring for her would be working 24 hours unable to sleep, and I asked myself, well, how could this person, no matter how hard she tried, give good quality care? And so I worried about the worker's health and about my mother's health. Just because someone is so desperate for a job that they agree to take a 24-hour shift doesn't mean they can do their best. And then when I learned that on top of that, they would only be paid for 13 of the 24 hours, I realized what a horrible uh, criminal situation this is that Medicaid farms out this responsibility to insurance companies whose only concern is making money, squeezing as much work as they can out of the workers for as little as possible. So I was very, I don't know, remember how I found an that woman campaign, but fortunately I did so I could contribute something to this campaign. Thank you so much. So many of us wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for a home attendant named La Yi Chan. She had the courage to take on her employer, the agency CPC, when they were telling all their workers to be silent about what they were going through. 
It's been so inspirational that it has been the catalyst of this movement and the catalyst to end the 24 hour day. So up next, I want to invite Miss Chen. Thank you. Oh, it's not leaving.
and yet we only get little pay and little respect as our, bo our bosses think our bodies and life are disposable. So today we ask, give us justice. Stop this discriminatory racist violence of 24 hour workday. This is a country of democracy. What kind of democracy it is? If we don't stop 24 hour workday. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. Up next, we have the council member from Queens, Julie Wan, who understands what her constituents are going through, understands the fight, and will help us deliver for these home attendants. Give it up for Julie Wan! Can we give another round of applause for Christopher, council member Christopher Marte for all of the organizing and advocacy he has been doing for all of us? Yeah. Woo! Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Julie Wan, and I'm the council member from the 26th district representing Law and City, Sunnyside, Woodside, and Astoria in Queens. It is so important for me to stand in solidarity with my APA brothers and sisters, as well as everybody else that is here who is sick and tired of a 24 hour workday. The fact that it is 2022 and we still allow 24 hour workdays, it is beyond belief. And the fact, as a, as a chair of contract, it is unbelievable that we even allow government contracts through nonprofits to be 24 hour workdays. It is unacceptable and it must end. So I'm here to stand in sol solidarity with you that all of the HRA contracts as well as all the city uh, state contracts to work in partnership with our state to make sure that we are breaking up this 24 hour workday so that especially women of color, Asian Americans and Latino Americans and Black um, Americans who are working 24 hour workdays is no longer something that the government will be paying for or funding. So I stand in solidarity with you. I want, I am here to listen to you and your stories because they are the most powerful. I thank you for your courage. I thank you for your voice and I thank you for everything that you have done to make sure that everyone is aware of what is actually happening in our communities because you are the ones who have been by the bedside, making sure that those who are ill are being taken care of. And it is time that we take care of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. Up next, we have a man that needs no introduction. David Lee's report that dropped last December really broke the news to the mainstream media. He was able to put what we were saying what home, attend home attendants were saying in a document, in a 100 page report, calling out one of the biggest abusers and telling them that this has to end. And so give it up for David Lee, who works for Ron Kim, assembly member from Queens. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning. My name is David A. Lee, and I'm the Legislative Director and Chief Investigator for the Office of Assembly Member Ron Kim on our year-long investigation into the Chinese American Planning Council Home Attendant Program's alleged improprieties. I'll be reading the following statement on behalf of the Assembly Member. I'm pleased to be here today to endorse legislation from Council Member Christopher Marte to prohibit the 24-hour shift in New York City's home care industry. For over a year, my office has worked with dozens of home care workers, most of whom immigrant women of color, to seek a simple justice that workers must be paid for their labor and that no employer has the right to deprive their workers of time, dignity, and precious life. Unfortunately, New York State home care agencies and those who continue to defend them have neglected and disgraced this fundamental truth the foundation on which our labor rights rest. Workers speak of appalling labor, laboring conditions that indisputably rank as among the worst in our society. Families are broken and estranged, for home care rates are coerced to work for days on end, isolated from their children and loved ones. Lifelong injuries and trauma, trauma persist. Earlier this year, my office released an investigative report on one such agency, the Chinese American Planning Council Home Attendant Program, or CPC HAP. Let me be clear. We must pass Councilmember Marte's bill and its analog pending the state legislature and codify the termination of the 24-hour workday in state and city statute. 
but our findings from our investigation led us to an irrefutable conclusion that CPC Hap and others made a deliberate choice to render abuse and violence against their workers in service of accruing greater capital and power. While CPC Hap hides under the pretense of progressivism and worker advocacy, in practice, they have engaged in the most cynical of tactics to undermine the rule of law, to strip workers of their legal rights through mandatory arbitration, and evade civil and criminal liability for their wrongdoing. Worse yet, CPC Hap intimidates its workers as a means of falsifying their payroll accounting records, going as far to threaten workers who rightfully report their nighttime working hours with prison time. I reiterate once more, law enforcement must investigate Chinese American Planning Council Home Attendant Program for its egregious and extensive crimes done unto our most vulnerable workers and render justice once and for all for our home care workers. <laughs> Passage of Council Member Marte's bill in the City Council will be a much needed step towards ending the criminality of the 24 hour workday. There will be those who oppose us on the basis that nonprofit home care agencies are victims too, that they, that they too are wrong and do not deserve to be a malign. But to argue as such is to privilege the bosses who, out of their own volition, chose to criminally break the law over the workers from whom the fruits of labor are born. Those who argued against this bill unequivocally surrendered the right to call themselves friends of workers. Therefore, I urge the City Council to pass Councilmember Marte's bill to definitively end 24-hour shifts for home care workers across the city and bring workers one step closer towards realizing justice. I promise I will fight to do the same in Albany. Thank you so much. <laughs> Give it up for David Lee! Members, 
the industry abuses and exploits their own aides, who are overwhelmingly women of color. The foundation of this industry is oppression. I stand in solidarity with the women of our communities, our mothers, our sisters, and aunts, the home health care aides who have risked their lives to care for our community's loved ones during this pandemic. Many of these women have been forced to work 24-hour shifts, sometimes consecutively with no breaks, while being paid for only 13 hours per day. This is not just wage theft, it is exploitation. We need transformational change. This is an issue of racial justice and economic justice, but it's also a matter of the rights of our seniors. Our seniors deserve quality care, competent care by people who are well rested and paid fairly. So I stand here now calling on the city council to pass this bill, and I'm excited to take this fight up to Albany with all of you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Grace Lee. Uh, we're going to close up with only two more speakers, but before I allow Janine, or Janine from NMAS, who has been one of the strongest coalition uh, organizations in this fight, I want to say that as of this morning, we have 21 council members that have signed on to the bill, and we have the commitment of four other council members that will sign on soon. And so that will get us to 25 out of the 51 person body. So we're so close to getting to the majority to pass this bill. So without further ado, I want to invite Yanin. Hey everyone, my name is Yanin Pena and I'm with the National Mobilization Against Sweatshops, one of the three worker centers organizing with the A9 Woman campaign. Our campaign applauds Chris Marte on this groundbreaking bill. The stories the home care workers have shared with you today are not just a few isolated cases. They only begin to ca capture the full devastating toll that these shifts inflict on its workforce. A 2014-2018 study concluded that home care workers had worse general physical and mental health when compared to workers paid similar wages. So it's no wonder that there's a home care worker shortage. There's no wonder that workers don't want to work these shifts. For too long, shifts have destroyed countless lives in the city for the sake of preserving an industry that is supposedly meant to dispense life-saving care for vulnerable and sick New Yorkers. For too long, too many people have defended this system as it crushes women of color under its weight. That's why today we're happy to stand with Chris Marte to support the No More 24 Act. It is a major step in valuing the lives of women, immigrants, their families, and patients. It sends a powerful message that our lives, our lives matter over profits and, we're, and are no longer up for debate. So if you truly care about women, patients, caregivers, mothers, and families, you will stand with the home care workers in support of this bill. This bill is a victory for all workers, all New Yorkers. We invite you to join us to fight for our lives, our families, our health. Thank you so much. No more 24! And finally, we'll have Zisha Ning from Chinese Staff and Worker Association to translate and close it out for us. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you for coming today. We have a very strong fight. Many employees from the Fara Zheng Tangyuan Jie all of us have a common goal. We have a common goal. 就是要取消这种非常不人道的压迫我们移民和有色主义妇女的二十四小时工作日。好了，我们听到了很多人的发言。首先，市议员马太他首先第一个感谢，就是我们护理员，因为是唯有大家这样子站出来，才能够推动它
。那这今天呢，最非常的这个主角是我们大家的护理员了，是不是？好了，我们现在要发出我们的大喊，好不好 ？No No More，No More，No More，Thank you， 谢谢。加油！ Uh, now let's take a quick photo. 好，我们现在大家手机一点，大家拍个照片，好不好？大家手机一点来，跟司仪员、跟司仪员站在一起，合个影。No more. No more. No more. Twenty four. No more. Twenty four. No more. Twenty four. Twenty four. Twenty four. Twenty four. Twenty four. Twenty four. Gracias a todos. 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 Gracias a todos.